a Prime Minister who likes to focus on the positive, finding he cannot escape a shadow of his own making. Parties looked like they might be fading last week. But now, photographic evidence of drinking and general merrymaking, a toast, a speech, and a lot of alcohol in Downing Street, all to mark the departure of communications director Lee Kane. Not a party, says number 10, a work leaving do. Labour sensed trouble some time ago for that date in number 10. A lockdown had recently been imposed in England, barring indoor mixing outside the same household unless reasonably necessary for work purposes. Will the Prime Minister tell the House whether there was a party in Downing Street on the 13th of November? Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, no, but I'm sure that it, and it, whatever happened, uh, the guidance was followed and the rules were followed at all times. Words which may come back to haunt the Prime Minister, but he believes it was within the law a leaving do in the workplace. And the police clearly accepted his explanation because he was not fined for this event. Others were. A supporter of the Prime Minister accepts his explanation. It was a work do. That's what people do at work. You have leaving dues. Now, I understand entirely the, 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 the public anguish at a time when they were locked down and they were not supposed to meet together, but there clearly was a distinction between the workplace where people work together and are effectively in a bubble and what was taking place outside. And, and I don't know, but I presume the police have reached the same judgment, so they've not impart, uh, imposed fines for that. So I, that, that's the view that I take. The Prime Minister has apologised. Clearly there's a difference in judgement, but it wasn't a crime, and I don't believe that it was a party. Labour is dismissive of this suggestion. I had a member of staff move on from my team during the pandemic. We, had, we said goodbye to him on Zoom. He was sitting on a park bench, it was during winter, and one of my colleagues took some presents, put them on the park bench, and then stepped two metres away. We were sticking to the rules. That's what counted as a work event during the COVID pandemic. It's absolutely outrageous to claim that you can just party with bottle after bottle after bottle, which are clearly visible in this photograph, and, and count that as a work event. The main union leader for civil servants believes the pictures raise questions. In the civil service, like any member of the public, you're going to look at that photograph and find it quite extraordinary that, the, that some people at that event were fined and the Prime Minister wasn't. So only the Met Police know why that is. It raises questions about whether the outcome of all of this is going to be proportionate and fair between politicians and civil servants. But it just simply raises more questions that we don't have answers to. I mean, ultimately, I think now we've just got to get Sue Gray's report. I think that's That'll be facts, not just a photograph. The photos dropped late this afternoon on a relatively quiet day in Westminster. And the reaction in the Conservative Party, well, that's pretty predictable. One critic of the Prime Minister pointed out the pictures of the bottles of alcohol and said, that is my definition of taking the piss. In the Cabinet, strong support for the Prime Minister. In Downing Street, irritation that the photos are out, but a strong belief that the Prime Minister will get through this whole affair unscathed. His challenge, though, is that is the Prime Minister surviving this on the basis of a narrow defence in law, whilst the perception is that he was not meeting the spirit of that law in the way that others were expected to. Out of a clear sky came trouble for a Prime Minister hoping to move on. In this affair, Boris Johnson is no master of events. Well, Nick is here now. How is Downing Street reacting to the appearance of these photos? Well, there is real irritation in number 10. Uh, they believe that these ve uh, the, the leaking of these photos was a hostile act by former aides. And the reason why they're so annoyed is that they think this was a pretty innocent event. The Prime Minister was in his office in number 10. He was walking to the lift to take him to his flat in number 11. And there's a corridor you can see there into the open plan press office in number 12. He could see a gathering there for Lee Kane, the departing communications chief. And he thought it was right to say a few words. And uh, you've seen the pictures of the drink. And it was permitted for number 10 staff to be in number 10 at the time. 
they were administering the furlough scheme, they were administering the vaccine and all that sort of stuff. That was allowed to be happening is the view and uh, that was a workplace a, a, a event um, and that the Prime Minister spoke uh, did that speech and they say it lasted no more than 10 to 15 minutes and then he went up to his flat. So annoyance. Um, but number 10 also believe, look, police have looked at these photos and they've decided that the prime minister didn't uh, commit any offence. And in isolation, the view is those photos don't look good. But when we do see the whole Sue Gray report, there'll be what I'm described, told is a mound of photos and seen in wider context, it will be the context of a work gathering. And these sort of events were not banned if it was a work gathering. But there there is a challenge for the Prime Minister tonight, and that is on the front page of the Times tomorrow. They are saying, challenging the explanation I've had, is that at that meeting that the Prime Minister had earlier this month with Sue Gray, she's the Whitehall troubleshooter who's been looking into this, that the Prime Minister said, why don't you drop your report now um, that there's been this police investigation? And the Times are reporting that the Prime Minister is saying, look, it's all out there, so why don't you drop it? That is a Times report. I should say that we haven't verified those reports remarks by the Prime Minister. Uh, in the Cabinet, there's support, as I was saying in my report for the Prime Minister, amongst Tory rebels, not happiness. And interestingly, I spoke tonight to Steve Baker, ardent Brexit, who has been critical of the Prime Minister. He said on this one, I'm not going to go over the parapet. Now it's the time for the Cabinet to act. And the Grey report itself of a... So the expectation is that we will now get that report on Wednesday. It will be people who are familiar with it say that it will be a very, very difficult moment for the Prime Minister. But they do not believe that it will be enough to force his resignation. That, interestingly, from a source who is no friend of the Prime Minister. Interestingly, people familiar with the report are saying that it could be very, very difficult for senior members of the civil servant. They were seen, there's evidence, written evidence, that they were organising these parties. There was evidence that they were warned that they weren't a good idea. And the significant thing about that is that is coming from people who are friends of the civil service, who are not hostile to the civil service. Nick, thank you. Well, the emergence of those photos today has brought fresh condemnation, as we were hearing, from the likes of Steve Baker and the leader of the Scottish Tories, Douglas Ross, who said the images would rightly make people very angry. But many others remain loyal to the Prime Minister, among them Peter Bone, who joins us now. Look, he was asked about the 13th of November 2020. He said, no, there wasn't a party or it was done within the guidelines. There was a party, wasn't there? If you look at those pictures. Well, I agree with Nick. He said it perfectly. The Prime Minister thought it was a works event. The Metropolitan Police thought it was a works event. All Therefore, it wasn't. But they, you, know, you, you might want it to be a party. But unless you're going to say that the Prime Minister is not telling the truth and the Met Police aren't telling the truth, it wasn't a party. And the explanation Nick gave is seems totally, totally reasonable to me. But we think some others there did get a fine. Well, I, I, and so I, I that's no, dancing on the head of a pin, isn't well, it? Well, I have no idea about that. But if you're talking about the prime minister, he was at a work event. The prime, the metropolitan. I mean, you remember all the demand for the police to investigate. They spent half a million quid on this. They spent weeks doing it, and I'm happy to t take the outcome of the the the, the police. I, I I find it unbelievable that this is now I mean somebody's trying to stir it up for the Prime Minister but I think it's going to backfire because the explanation it's is perfectly reasonable Right, you, you made the point about uh, the verdict of the police uh, perfectly fairly but there's also the court of public opinion and there's politics isn't there if we think about that uh, tweet that we got from Steve Baker today we can see it on the screen uh, and he, he basically he draws attention to the public information campaign at the time of Covid Look her in the eyes and tell her you never bend the rules. Bending the rules, it's not breaking the law, is it? I mean, that was the spirit of the advice the government gave people. Diwali, the day after this party, the advice was don't get together, don't socialise. This, this was a work event. Um, now, certain people you mentioned have never liked the Prime Minister, so I'm not surprised some of the comments that have been made. But the, in, the, in the court of public opinion, we had the local elections just a few weeks ago when the Labour Party went all out saying, Boris, he broke all the rules, they were partying, this is the number one issue. And Labour, I think, lost seats north of London. So I think... I think they lost Westminster as well. But, but 
But the truth of the matter is, if they'd been right, there would have been wholesale losses of Conservative seats to Labour, and there wasn't. And I think there's people in the Labour Party who are now questioning where Keir Starmer's concentration on party gate and not the issues that voters con are concerned about, like the war in Europe, COVID, uh, the small votes and the economy. I, I, I think that that's true. I think people are concerned about that. I think th these, these parties are not registering other side out, outside of the Westminster bubble. Well, we should, on Wednesday, finally have the report. Do you think you could read anything in there that would cause you to withdraw your support from the, from the Prime Minister? Or is it unconditional, in no, that no. sense, on this matter? No, no, I think that the Sue Gray report is, is very important. Uh, at one time, that's all we thought we were going to get. But now we've had the police investigation, it's completely clear that the police don't think he broke any rule. Well, there was that one occasion when he was ambushed by a, a birthday cake. And by the way, this latest thing that we're talking about was published at the Times. The Times newspaper published it. They, they talked about uh, that event and they even had a the picture. Lee Kane farewell do. Yes. So nobody created a fuss there. So I'm afraid, I think the Labour Party have got this totally wrong. I think it's costing them dearly. Do you think he shouldn't have been fined at all then? Well, Do look, you differ with the police in that respect? No, people tonight I mean, saying they should reopen no, but, their investigation. No, but you see, if he could be fined for turning up it to, a, to what he thought was a meeting and someone giving him a birthday cape in a Tupperware box can suddenly get a fine, it's clear these other things were clearly work events because the police have been, you know, a, a really detailed, impartial investigation. And if the great report, as uh, Nick was implying there, does have serious criticisms of the civil service... Will you be quite happy with that? Or do you think no, ultimately I think, I the think tone the big, of leadership I, I, is set I, I think the big, by the Prime Minister I think and the, the people around No, him. I think the big question is, in the Sue Gray report, how did these things happen? Now, I'm quite clear that Boris wasn't involved. He was, he was, he was he's working. raising a glass in the face. No, I, I think we can all agree that's a work event. But how did the... What, these other things that went on, these other parties, how did that happen and who was... In, now, I know Dominic Cummings was there right, well, right up until that moment we're talking about. It'll be interesting to see what the report says about him. Peter Bone, thank you very much. Well, what about the civil service and the idea that they're going to carry the can to a great extent? With us now is Lord Bob Kerslake, who is head of the civil service. He's advised Labour in the past, but sits as a crossbencher in the House of Lords. Welcome. Uh, uh, do you think there's going to be an element of the civil service really catching it in the neck here? Well, look, we've got to be clear that the bulk of civil servants were just as surprised as the bulk of the public were uh, when these stories came out. The bulk of civil servants were nowhere near number 10. But if there are a number of senior civil servants who were aware, complicit, uh, allowing these things to happen, then of course they must be held to account. But I think the important thing here is not the number of fines. Uh, the issue here is the failure of leadership and standards that allowed these parties to happen when people were making great sacrifices in the country. The second piece here is about basically the failure to come clean when the uh, issues were raised. That, I think, is a very serious issue. For politicians uh, and civil servants. Politicians and civil servants, absolutely. And coming back on your point about they should be held to account if indeed this is the type of criticism heading towards the head of the civil service, the principal private secretary, the prime minister, if indeed. What does held to account mean? I mean, does it mean they should resign, that their future in government should be over? Well, we need to see Sue's report before you can form a view about that. I have a huge amount of respect for her, and I know she would have told the truth as she saw it. But it would be a bit perverse, wouldn't it, if the Prime Minister stayed on and the Cabinet Secretary didn't? Right. Uh You've heard Peter Bone's defence of the Prime Minister. We know there was one fixed penalty notice. There wasn't one for this occasion that these photos uh, feature tonight. Is that the right judgment, do you think? No. I'm very, very clear in my mind and have been from the start that this isn't about the police investigation or about the fines. It's about clear breaches of the rules that the government set on multiple occasions in Number 10. Nobody is really denying that now, whether or not this particular event where we've seen the pictures tonight was one of those. But what the pictures do is they bring to life the experience that people had at the time and then they see people were enjoying themselves, relaxing, having parties. That will cause a reaction, trust me. I've seen the uh, response it gets from people. And the second issue, and we mustn't duck this issue, is about whether or not Parliament was unintentionally or intentionally misled. 
if it was intentionally misled, that is a serious, serious issue that is yep. nothing to do with casual parties. These, we don't exactly know the context of the photos they do each night in the sense he might have been walking down the corridor, um, been in there for moments. I mean, it doesn't take long to take a picture, does it? In no, it sense. doesn't. Um, but your point is more general. My point is more general. Um, just think about the context. People weren't even going to funerals or allowed to go to funerals, Absolutely. meeting people outside their bubble. It wouldn't have taken a genius to see that any kind of social shouldn't have been happening at that time, even to see the departure of a long-standing civil servant. It just wasn't on, and most people, right-minded people at that time, would have thought that. Now, Downing Street is many things. I mean, it's a place of work, it's a centre of political power. If things are going wrong, in your view, in the way they were, who is ultimately responsible? Is that the head of the civil service? Is it the prime minister? I mean, who, who is responsible for that place of work if there's a not a party house atmosphere, but an atmosphere in which this sort of thing was going on on multiple occasions. Ultimately, the PM, and just to answer that question, could you imagine this of happening, uh, happening when Theresa May was the Prime Minister? But, of course, the head of the private office, the Cabinet Secretary, should also be uh, taking responsibility if things are happening that shouldn't be happening. But in the end, it's the Prime Minister's office, it's the Prime Minister's house. Lord Kerslake. Thank you very much indeed.